Hello YouTube, in this video, I learned all about making compute shaders. Before we start making them, it's important to understand what they do and how they work. Normally, code is ran on the CPU of your computer, but with a compute shader, it runs on the GPU. Due to the GPU's ability to execute code in parallel, we can take a very large sequence of calculations and split it up to run all at once on the GPU. Now, because compute shaders are, well, shaders, they aren't written in c -sharp, but rather HLSL, or high-level shader language. And I don't even know low-level shader language, so this should be interesting. Because I'm basically a complete noob, I started off by following some rather helpful tutorials. The tutorial has you create a 50 by 50 grid of basic cubes, each with different colors and Z positions, and making a button randomizing these values as many times as the repetition variable is. It then takes you through how this code can be rewritten as a compute shader and significantly sped up. I also followed a tutorial on fractals. I understood that one significantly less, but nonetheless it's a cool result. Now that I'm basically a pro at compute shaders, I decided to write one for my own. All it does is loops over every single pixel in an image and sets its color to a randomly selected value. To spice it up a little, I then changed it so each pixel will get a unique color. So I've basically just created colored noise. Slightly amping up the difficulty, I then made a new compute shader that loops over a set number of particles and randomizes their positions. Now, random motion isn't too interesting, so I wrote a new, more advanced compute shader that tracks the agent's position and rotation to move it according to a variable called speed. Alone, this doesn't look too cool, but we can make it slightly more interesting by adding some more agents, and by making the agents bounce off the bounds of the screen, rather than just coming out the other side. Now we're getting a little better, but we can make this even cooler by giving each agent its own rotation amount and a unique color. All things considered, I think this effect is pretty darn okay. But because this is a compute shader, we should have no problem handling, say, 100,000 agents on a 1920 by 1080 screen versus the 20 agents on the 256 by 256 screen. So, I've basically just created abstract art, and it got me thinking. If a handwritten test can be sold as $270,000 as an NFT, I'd basically be a millionaire right now. So, if anybody knows any stupid rich people who would be willing to pay, say, a million billion dollars for something that the whole internet has access to, hit me up. But because a million billion dollars isn't really enough to retire with in good old 2021, I think we can do better. First, I think it would be cool if we could get some of the agents attracted and repelled by the cursor. Already, without doing anything, this can create some pretty interesting effects. But this can look even cooler if there's a slight blur applied to the agents. This creates some abstract art, in my opinion, better than the first. But to be extra sure of this, I asked 71 100% real art critics how, in detail, they appreciate this art. I was met with, quite, it looks like I just took LSD, totally psychedelic, and in detail, I don't understand how 99.9% .9 of people can't see, but 1% can. That leaves 100.9%, which references my previous video where I made Squid Game. Which you should go watch, by the way. After reading these comments, I think it's safe to say that this piece would sell for like a million trillion dollars, so I think I'm all set for an early retirement. So now we know that compute shaders can solve all of our problems by making us rich enough to not have any problems in the first place. But Will, I don't care about the money. All I care about is winning a game in my statistics class, I hear you cry. Well, 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 you're in luck because compute shaders are perfect for that too. On a completely unrelated note, my stats teacher introduced a game called Greedy Piggy. The game is played with everybody standing at the start of the round, and a die is rolled, and whatever number is on the die is the amount of points that you earn. At any time, you can sit down and secure your points, but if a 5 is rolled and you're still standing, you lose all the points from that round. 
So instead of calculating the optimal strategy like a nerd, using compute shaders, we can simulate a million rounds and see the optimal strategies from the results. The first step of this is realizing that you can decide to sit after a certain number of rolls or once you reach a certain amount of points. With the simulation, I ran a 16 round simulation and a 1000 round simulation before I managed to get to the 1 million round simulation. I set the simulation to stop after a certain number of rolls or once a certain score is reached and then recorded the result on a spreadsheet. I kinda just did the lower numbers for fun, mainly because according to the law of large numbers, the more time a simulation is run, the closer the results will be to the true value. So in my super professional analysis, I only really need to analyze the 1 million round simulation. We can also visually see this being true with the graph of the 16 round simulation, and how the 10 is way higher than it should be because of luck. After looking at the raw numbers, the most optimal strat is to play until you have 16 points. So that's the strat I used when I walked into class fully ready to beat everyone. And I didn't even make top 5. But no 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 no, you think I actually care about a silly game we play in school? Of course not, I only spent all my day off on this because I didn't care at all. I'm not mad, you're mad. Now it's time for a quiz. What is the real reason I lost? A. My simulation was wrong. B. There was too much luck involved. C. People were cheating. D. The sus imposter sabotaged the game. Now pause the video and think, what do you think is the real reason? And leave your answer in the comment section below. Okay, got it? So if you said A, how dare you doubt my programming skills? My simulation was 100% correct. If you said B, you're probably right because we only played 10 rounds so a lot of people got lucky but you can never truly tell who the imposter is, so I'd accept D as a valid answer too. But when the teacher proved mathematically that my strategy was the best strategy, like two minutes afterwards, I could only smirk under my mask knowing that I was the real winner. So did Compute Shaders fail me? No, I failed Compute Shaders. One last thing I want to explore with Compute Shaders is Cellular Automata. And I started off with programming a very common cellular automata, Conway's Game of Life. In the Game of Life, each pixel gets checked with its neighboring pixels. If a pixel is alive and it has less than two living neighbors, or more than three living neighbors, it dies. If a dead pixel has exactly three living neighbors, it will be revived. On a 256 by 256 screen, it looks like this. Now this is what it looks like set to a 1920 by 1080 screen set to full speed. Now this is pretty cool, but I thought of something else we can do with this. We can have two separate colors, each with specific rules about encountering the other colors and see how they react. Once all the crazy movement dies out, we can see the little territories that each color decided to settle down in. Another thing we can do with cellular automata is separate them into two different neighborhoods and making up new rules regarding neighborhood sizes. This is called a multi-neighborhood cellular automata and they can give crazy organic looking results. With the rules that I programmed, I got this. Which I think at least looks better than the single neighborhood one. Messing around with some different neighborhood sizes and rules, I came up with a strange pattern that kind of feels like scales on a reptile with the colors I chose. Then I made one more, but this time with red and black colors because I thought they looked cool together. Then I thought it would be interesting if the cursor could kill the cells and its surroundings, and I was right. This is arguably the most satisfying thing I've ever seen. My favorite thing to do with it is trying to erase all the cells on the screen. One more thing I want to do with compute shaders is mess around with Voronoi textures. This is a noise texture that comes with randomly placing points around the screen and then looping through every single pixel and getting the shortest distance to a point and using the distance to linearly interpolate between two colors. The cool thing about this is that we can move these points around and the Voronoi will change with it. So giving each point a similar movement pattern to the first shader, we get this. If you stand back and squint a little bit, it kinda looks like spheres rolling around. Even after all that, I barely even scratched the surface of what you can do with compute shaders but it's nice to have them now in my back pockets in case I need them for future projects. If you watched up until this point, you obviously liked the video at least a little bit, 
so please consider subscribing. It's fast, free, and it will help me out in the future if I have any more statistics games. Anyways, catch you next time.